Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode seven of the Own the Moment podcast. My name is TJ Lasig. I'm your host here at OTM, and we have another exciting episode for you tonight on a day where the market has been absolutely booming. And on top of that, we have another very special guest with us that we will get to in just a moment. But first, allow me to introduce my co-host. This is the man that has been chasing a puppy around all day long, <laughs> Mr. Justin Herzig. Justin, how are we doing tonight? Uh, it is great. It is a, uh, it's a movement, as our friends would say, over at the club. It is great to be here. We are officially the 8.30 Eastern time after party. Um, time is crazy during COVID, but uh, we're loving it. It's great to be here. And I'm, I'm really excited for this, uh, to have Jack on and uh, add a little youth to this, uh, to this old show. Yes, yes. For the for those of us coming over from our friends over at Club Top Shot, just a, a slight mispronunciation <laughs> of the name there. But hey, own the movement doesn't sound so bad either. That's not too bad. I like it. <laughs> All righty. So now allow me to introduce our guest for tonight. This is a young man who is the creator of Snapback Sports, an account with over 1 million followers on Snapchat. This is a man who is a co-owner of the FCF Wild Aces football team, which I'm excited to learn more about. A man that is in the crypto punk streets, the physical card streets, and of course, the top shot streets. He is in the middle of a 1K to 100K bankroll challenge, and of course, is the owner of one of the most prestigious moments in NBA top shot history, the number 23 LeBron Hollow. We have Mr. Jack Settleman. Jack, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I appreciate the intro. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be. Going to be a fun one. I was saying to Justin before I've I've watched the club top shots and all, but don't don't know a ton about you other than that. But I see that you've got a lot going on, so excited to to dive into all of that. Justin looks like you have something to say over there. No, I was just like that intro just kept going on. I had to have him cut out the Gatorade <laughs> aspect. The only person who actually filmed the blue Gatorade, I had to cut <laughs> have him cut. It's yeah, it's silly. We could have we could have kept going. What do you like? How do you have time for all this? First off. Uh, I quit my job a few weeks ago and, um, the goal was to like really bunker down on snapback. I, I was, I mean, I recently just got exposed to this whole new community of people. Um, so the goal was, you know, continue riding out what I had built over the last three years, took a shot and went solo for the first time ever, um, had always been working with companies or for companies. And then the goal for 2021 was like, obviously grow, scale, build out revenue, you know, all the, all the cliche shit, but it was like, do what makes you happy. And I stumbled upon top shot and like just having so much fun talking about it, being in the community, being a part of it, buying, selling, doing the challenge that like, it, it honestly interrupted a lot of what I wanted to do in 2021. But like, I'm having so much fun doing it. It's only led to better and bigger things. Um, so yeah. And I'm shocked to hear you said only a couple of weeks ago. Um, I would have thought that you were, I would have thought you were just straight out of school, like going straight hard into all this, just kind of living the new millennial lifestyle. Let me just not work for the man. Let me just build my own company. And next thing I know, I've got a million others just following me because <laughs> that sounds awesome. That that is what the intention might have been. But I learned from some smart people and it was like, you don't have to be you can be entrepreneurial within companies, right? And there's a lot of value to that. Like when I went, I started the Action Network and it was like, figure out how to learn social media with resources and backing. And, you know, you're going to have retweets from Ravel. So it's like, instead of going out and trying to build a Twitter following from scratch, actually have those resources and learn a lot, um, which I've done. over. I, I graduated in 2018 from UT Austin. Um, so I, I've done, I've had two jobs since then, but now I'm on my own. Hi, and, uh, did you have a mentor at Action Network? Who would you say had the biggest, the largest impact on you? So Connor Nolte was my boss there. He's huge into Top Chat also. I still talk to him all the time. So I learned from him and then Chad Melvin, who had actually brought me in, um, love Chad. Uh, Ravel, I still talk to all the time. Scott Miller, the editor there. They're just, they're great people. I, I talk to them all the time. That's awesome. Very cool. And then, yeah, can you elaborate on, on snapback sports a bit more for those of us that maybe aren't super familiar like myself? Yeah. I, I did some reading on it, but would love to hear 
from you directly what that is to you and how you came up with the idea and, and where that kind of falls in in what you have going on right now. Yeah, it's funny. I live like a double life. Like there's the DFS betting top shot community that I'm in who knows me for like the young kid who bought the LeBron moment and who is in top shot. And then I have a whole nother life, which is kind of top shot or is snapback. And the two are starting to mesh together, which I want to see. But I started snapback my senior year at UT, my sophomore year there, we'd start an e-commerce sites so where, you know, silhouette of lebron's block on igadala and you know those those bullshit e-commerce sites that everyone was seemingly building and we we're marketing through social media i'm paying these big social media accounts hundreds of thousands of dollars to market our stuff and i was like what if i just built that platform myself so i looked at instagram looked at twitter and found snap didn't really have that experience but it was actually set up to have a really nice sports experience so highlights memes live on the platform you can reply one-to-one -one, which is really big for community building and then when you go to games you can film through the screen the vertical screen which is how like these phones are meant to capture like right now you you look at highlights on twitter it, it's horizontal and it's just not like being at the game so i really like that aspect of snapchat uh, it started off like just like House of Highlights. It was just clips. And then slowly I started to mess around with it. And what I realized was social media, the point was to connect, right? Like we don't connect without Twitter. But what happened with these platforms is the big voices just got more places to kind of talk. The guys on TV, well, now they have 300,000 followers. Stephen A has a million followers. And he's not answering fans. Nothing's different than him tweeting his thought out to the Twitterverse than it is saying you're on TV. And I really started to engage and they started thinking of me as some voice in the sports world, but I would actually give them the time of day to kind of talk with them about Lamar or Julius Randle or whatever, who should be in the all-star game. So their opinion was felt. And I think that's what makes the account very unique. Another one is like ESPN, there's no bias in them, which is actually not how we talk about sports. Like you see sports through your own personal lens and then you debate with your friends. You, you've done that since you were two years old and I'll post like I got the Lamar poster behind me. Like I, you know, everything is kind of framed through a Lamar lens. So I'm not rooting for Patrick Mahomes to succeed as much as, you know, the general sports fan is. So that part of the audience, like I'll do the bit, ESPN, Bleacher, they'll do the biggest numbers, NBA Finals, Game 7. Mine will be like the wild card round against the Titans. Like when, when he threw that pick, like my, my phone was broken. Like it could not function because of the activity that the account was getting. So I think the person, the person, and then after a while, I realized it was kind of just highlights and opinions. So I started to create content, Twitter, podcasting, TikTok, Instagram, and, and just start to build it out, work with brand sponsors and make it into more of a legit media company. Um, so that's where I am now. That's that's awesome. You you said so many things that I know so little about and just remind <laughs> me how old I am in this space. And uh, I think I graduated like less than a decade of older than you. It's crazy <laughs> how fast these things move. Um, yeah. You have an option here. You have to give up snapback sports and everything you built, or you have to give up everything you own around the NFT space and you can't enter back into it. What do you choose? Uh, is it from an EV perspective just or life from EV. just a li life EV? Um, I would give up, I would give up the top shot stuff. I would have to just because that's a crypto punk. That's the crypto punk too. Crypto that's, punk as well. That's, that's, that's all NFT. I would not, maybe if, if you're considering cryptocurrency, that's where the discussion, nah, uh, but just NFTs, I would give up the NFTs because I mean, to a degree, I don't think they're going to zero, but when you're, you're playing on top shot, like there has to be an understanding for everyone that there could be a net zero here. Like someone else could create top shot that could be better and everything could be worth it. Like, I don't think it'll happen, but I think that's in play. Um, and then snapbacks just, it's my brand at this point. It's my baby. It's what I've built. I think we're going to do really, really exciting things with it. So I would ride that out. Plus with my NFTs, I just kind of watch them and see if they appreciate in value versus uh, snapback. I can make shit happen. Like that's my favorite thing is like, that's why I love sports and hate golf because if you put effort into it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it said it's true. That is true.
Uh, but golf, I hate because like I can't if you you can't hustle on the golf course. You know, you, you either hit it straight or not. And I come from like soccer, or basketball, where I wasn't the most talented, but smarts are working harder than people. So I think I, I feel more of that with snapback. You're talking to someone who lost like eleven hundred dollars in a round to producer coop. You can definitely get hustled on the golf course. <laughs> Just throwing yeah, that yeah. out there. No, that is for sure. That is for sure. <laughs> Oh, very yeah. cool. I think I think that's that's the right answer. I know the the chat is giving you a hard time, but I, I I respect going with the the business, going with the the baby that you've kind of built there, and really impressive what you've done, without a doubt. So shout out to everyone in the chat. It's time to do what I have to do here as the host. So if you are not following us on Twitter, please go ahead, give us a follow at Own the Moment NFT. We're bringing you a ton of different information there on a daily basis always coming up with with what we can. And on that note, I, I am going to give an update here because we, we've seen the craziest 24 hours, I, I think, in Top Shot history. In the last, I'm looking at Crypto Slam right now. Is it is that confirmed the most? What What's it at right now, Marketplace? So in the last 24 hours, according to Crypto Slam, there have been $6 million sa- dollars of sales, 11,935 yeah. buyers and 83,747 transactions. So it's got to be the most unique buyers. And I really do think that we saw an influx of new users yesterday with that Cool Cats pack drop, both from these buyers numbers and from some of the prices that they were posting the Cool Cats 2s at when they first joined. It was clearly people that that maybe have not been around and were throwing throwing some of these cool cats up there for like 40 bucks and yeah. just getting it taken right away. It was, it was madness. The, the site was basically not working because we probably had thousands and thousands of people all trying to buy the same moment. I had at least, I'm sure I'm not the only one. My email inbox is flooded with your transaction <laughs> did not go through. I tried um, for one, but I did not. After the one, I was like, okay, this is site, site issues. But I think it is the second highest right now. Maybe it passed it. Definitely the most users that have actually transacted. Um, but what I think can be a fun conversation, maybe, I, I don't know, we always joke about this on Club Top Shop because Jennings and Jeremy Levine, right? Like they don't look at the bottom of the marketplace and like a lot of our chat does. Um, but what I've noticed, there hasn't been a ton of high sales, like, uh, you know, high five figure sales. There hasn't been a six-figure sale in a very long time, even with the amount of new money and new people. But uh, there's been a ton of liquidity in the lower parts of the market, which I think is extremely interesting. Yeah, I think last three large sales, at least the ones that I saw. So you have the Kawhi, that was the number one S2 Hollow for, I think, 41500 You yeah. have Osimo made his purchase of the number one Manu Ginobili, the run it back. How um, much was think- that? Uh, 14, six, maybe 16,000, something around that. Um, and so, yeah. And then I think the third actually was our Devin Booker one, which we thought we got a great value out of. And that was about 10,000 change. Um, but, but I think overall it's a very good point because early on when you started seeing like a lot of the heavy hitters come in and obviously that includes the Bales, Peter Jennings, Jeremy group, there was also other activity that I'd say weren't in the Andy early days, but still were earlier than the rest of us and put that money in. The focus was those high end. And obviously right. you saw the multiple drawn. Um, and like, what does that mean for now? Because I would I'll admit, like when we've been talking about buying some of the cosmics, like I've seen a couple that I think are great values where they are the same price that they were like two, three weeks ago, um, just because there's no liquidity. But we're concerned that am I putting money in um, that it might actually be smarter to buy more at a base where others are going to have a, you know, a better chance of actually getting their hands on. And so when we compare like the MGLEs versus the Series 1s, which sometimes it's between like a 10, I mean, usually it's around like a 10x ratio, which one's going to appreciate? I'm not sure. But which one do I know that I can flip if I want to get out of that card? 100% it's going to be the common. And so that's a, right. a difficult choice. And I'll say, like, you know, I finally got a CryptoPunk and you saw a ton of crypt- high CryptoPunk sales, right? So it's not like the money isn't there anymore. And like, it's some bubble that just popped and it's going to start trickling down. It, it's very interesting as to why. And another thing that I'm super intrigued by is, you know, I hold a nice amount of the higher end ones, but not a crazy amount. But like people like Andy, Mike, Roham, Pranked, like, I worry, or at least wonder, 
is the concentration of the amount of people that hold these high-end cosmics and hollows like is that bad for the market and while while i don't want to sell anything because i do believe everything's just going to continue to go up because i'm so bullish on the platform sorry chad uh even though you want to label me as a bear um i like i sometimes wonder like would it be beneficial if a few of us started to sell those moments because i mean when i talked to pranksy and we bought the moment for 50k he said i should this is probably 100k today but i'm gonna sell it it's kind of my sacrificial lamb meaning he knew the pub he would get from it but also he knew kind of what you know what it meant to kind of continue to set those new all-time highs in the market yeah, but it's not like we don't have, you know, other than maybe a couple of the LeBrons, maybe maybe like the rookies, the Zion or Ja, but for the most part, you do have asking prices out there. Now, for example, the lowest asking price for the Devin Booker, I think is 50000 It's right. not worth 50000 right now, which basically says anyone who has it doesn't really want to get rid of it. So I guess I could see like, would it make sense for someone who has that booker to say, maybe I'm going to post it for 20, 25. And then if there was an actual serious buyer, that's a more legitimate conversation. Right. But the same thing is, well, I do believe in the long term. And they only need 50 of those. There's only 49 of those cosmics. So it's a very small amount there. And then you can talk about the concentration, obviously. Um, I think the other play there is if this market goes to that actual bid system that's being discussed, and even Rohan put out a tweet today, Mm. Um, I think it was today, uh, this morning in reaction to what happened last night, where just people were trying to all buy at the same time and just floods the market. It's not good from a technology standpoint. It's not good from a customer experience standpoint, but if there's an opportunity to put in bids, I think we then start seeing a bit more movement of the cosmics because if they're blind bids, people are going to say, okay, I'm going to test this and put it at 30. I'm going to test it and put it at 28 and just see if somebody autos, if their bid automatically takes it. I think that's going to lead to a bit more action long-term for those um, cosmic, you know, just the low legendary ones. hundred percent. And that's, I mean, that's the next feature I really want is either live auction or like a star stock where you can put in a live bid. And then that number is 10 times more valuable than the lowest market ass right now, right? Like this intangible account value, it gives you a general sense, but you know, if you can't sell it, then it doesn't really. So I think, the bid will definitely be uh, what I'm looking for. Yeah, I think that I think that'll have a big impact, especially on those higher end markets where, like we said, there's not a ton of liquidity. There's certainly not daily trades happening there. N not even really weekly at this point. A lot of those yeah. haven't really been touched at all in the month of February. But on the other hand, we've seen a ton of action with some of the more popular base set moments, for example, like. The, the lamello ball has just been going absolutely nuclear. I'm looking right now. Yeah, it's what's now, it at? It's now up to a lowest ask of sixteen hundred twenty-eight dollars. That's crazy. Um, so that, yeah, that, that to me, like I'm looking now. Someone, someone just bought, I don't know, seven of them in a row, at around fifteen hundred dollars. So there are definitely a lot of users that that are out here, and I think it's good for the the overall ecosystem, obviously more, more users, more transactions, getting more of the, the public type people into this. They're coming in to operate on a lower bankroll trade on a daily basis. They're not coming in necessarily to buy those 100K moments, but I, I do find that interesting. And I, I know that, I think Justin said that you have some, some predictions on LaMelo and specifically the upcoming master Cool Cat Challenge LaMelo Reward. So, Justin, I don't know what specifically yeah, yeah. you wanted to ask Jack about that, Jack. but it felt like a good time to transition to that one. Do you think you were a market mover when you uh, posted your, um, let's see, I think your quote was, for the LaMelo Master Challenge, you will, you strongly believe that there will be fewer than 1,000 minted and the lowest price will be $7,000. Yeah, so I have so many followers on snapchat where i've gotten to the point where like i know like what i say can do certain things it's not about top chat related it's about you know download this app or like i feel this way about this player type of thing um and my twitter following has increased by you know a few thousand since top shot's really been like a, a serious part of it and what was the thing I posted? So we did a thing on Club Top Shot. I said that Paul George was a really good value buy. That went from like 80 to 110. 
within minutes, right? We knew that. There are 500 concurrent people watching. I didn't own any Paul George, so it was a genuine just like I, whatever. Then I tweeted, um, not that. I tweeted about some player that I was buying, and I think it was the, it was the Luca Cool Cat, and like nine of them were bought within 30 minutes. And I was like, I don't think I could be wrong, but I don't think I have the influence to to kind of trigger double digit, you know, four digit sales. I just don't. I could be wrong by that. Um, but then the Lamelo thing. The funniest thing is I don't really follow that stuff as close as like first men or a lot of way smarter people in the platform do. It's just a complete guess. And then I actually would probably take it back because I realized like a lot of people are just going to hold on to their cool cat. Like I was thinking how many people are going to go out and buy Luca. That's going to really affect it. But I think a lot of people are just going to hold on and continue to stack for 800, 800, 800, 800, whatever it's going to cost. And there'll be more than um, whatever. But I, I mean, I sold my Luca cool cat this morning cause I'm trying to do the challenge and I have paper hands and I, I whiffed on that. So, uh, that clearly didn't stop people, right? Like when I announced I sold it, people definitely didn't sell out, but that was one of the easier, uh, flips that I've made in top shot, not even just for the challenge. Um, but I think there is a lot of interesting chatter about what the Lamello could be worth. Now that the Luca floor is at twenty four cat or twenty four hundred, I don't know if I'm vindicated. I don't know if I'm completely off. Like I don't even know where to go. But I think the moment of his his rookie moment is so crappy on the site. Like it's it's a really bad assist. Um, so I think a, a big dunk, and I assume it's the dunk, the putback dunk. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I'm really interested because he's going to – I'm Halliburton over him long-term, actually, but he's going to win Rookie of the Year. So, Yeah, and, I mean, we, we've joked about that moment as well. <laughs> and I think here's – I'm looking right now. He actually played 15 minutes in that game. And uh, right. he had zero points. They okay. probably literally really? couldn't find a play that he made. If they had to exactly. pick this one, I mean, yeah, that's desperation. We, yeah. We've That's joked scary. that any one of us could have made that. It's not even really an assist. He, he gives the guy a ball, and then the other person dribbles, right. makes it's a move, an and shoots. <laughs> it's an FDA assist. That's right? Crazy. And it's yeah. interesting because when we compare Series 1 to Series 2, um, R.J. Barrett is the only one that his rookie moment is from that NBA debut. For yep. the rookies in Series 2, a majority of them are from their NBA debut. That was obviously a conscious decision by Top Shot. But occasionally, you have some people – who just don't do much in their first game. Um, yeah. Gosh, and I'm blanking on who the player is right now, but we saw one who only played three minutes. Um, only played three minutes, only had two points, and it was a steal and a dunk, and it actually worked out really well. But like for the majority of them, there probably weren't great highlights, and you work with what you have. Um, but I, I do well, believe but, thousands is low. Oh, go for it. But what I was about to say was then – like we're always going to be in this constant debate because they're moments instead of cards. Like no one cares what LeBron, I always say this, like no one cares that LeBron's rookie Chrome is some weird, you know, no one knows what that shot even is. And same thing with the, the cosmic. Like when I, when I was learning the market and people were like, um, you know, LeBron cosmic is the, the Holy grail. I'm like the LeBron Kobe tribute dunk is 4 million times like more special of a moment. Uh, like LeBron's dunking against a player on the King. So if, if it's really just like that's LaMelo's true rookie, we'll see. Right. And I believe it was the entire Kings. They were all there. <laughs> he got up and down. <laughs> but no, I, and I think that'll be an interesting test going forward. Um, and actually, it's a, it's a difficult test because there's so few of them. But in general, do we value the set, the cosmic, whatever, the hollow, whatever it's going to be? Yeah. Or, you know, I think that's probably an outlier moment where a majority of players won't actually have that. Vince Carter, yeah. because, you know, his significance, maybe he has that. And there's probably a okay. few other players. Um, but I do believe that's probably one of the outliers. But for the for sure. thousand, I believe that's quite low. Um, because I think that, A, our bottleneck is going to be the Luka. So obviously, we know there's not going to be more than 3,200, 3,300. Um, but I think of the people that do complete it, with more people coming into the marketplace, 
majority of people understanding the value of it. Um, I think that there's probably end up going to be about 2000 to 2500. Um, that said, what the actual value is of the Lamello and your 7k guess. The only thing I've told our discord is I believe that the Luca cool cat will end up being about half as valuable as the Lamello one. Now, what those prices are, are far more determinant on how many people actually enter this market in the next couple months and all the other stuff. Um, but I don't and know you think that saying. leading up to the challenge ending or after, like a month after the Lamello challenge leading is up. redeemed? Yeah. Okay. Leading That's up. what's going to be the craziest shit ever is these sell-offs and these fire sales, um, which we saw, which is kind of why they... I think created the master challenge was to get more interest back into the cool cats. Um, so that's a whole nother thing. One of the, the major things I do forget sometimes is the potential EV in, um, you know, pulling a, a top cereal, right? Like when you're buying all the moments to get the challenge, you're just buying the floor, but then you could like, if you pull one or two Lamello, I mean, that could be a hundred K moment in theory. Right. And if you're completing a cosmic or a, not a cosmic anymore, but like the hollow um, series two right now, there's likely going to be about 40, 45 people that complete that is what we're seeing. So now your chances of getting either a Jersey or the number one is looking like what, four or 5%. So like that's right. substantial. Um, when you're talking 2000, 1500, however many end up completing the other one. Yeah. Still very small, but we are seeing that, hey, you get a single digit, you get even a double digit, that's got increased value. So it's got to be included in our EV calculation. Right. Yeah. No doubt. And I, I think the more you know, the more people that come onto the platform, these challenges are going to be probably the, the biggest opportunity because that's, that's the gamification aspect of it to me right now. People come on, they want to compete for the challenge or, you know, at least buy one of the moments from the challenge only to flip it later. So I definitely see that continuing to be a big part of the product. Also, Jack, just to warn you, if Justin tries to, to make some sort of bet with you on <laughs> estimating the price of Lamella, don't do it. He's going to take a free pack off to you. He did it to me on the Luca. He guessed that there were going to be 3,500 Lucas, and I think there were like 3,464, and he guessed the exact price. So if you aren't aware, Justin is, is actually a robot behind that. that <laughs> face. So don't let him sneak a bet on you. He's done it to me forever. He's probably going to do it to me again. But one of it was a good days, time to run. I, I just ran good. Him. Got a little <laughs> yeah, lucky. yeah, yeah. Just just ran good there. Um, I, I think so. I, I was leading into it a bit there with the challenges and the gamification aspect there. I know that the Top Shot team has also talked about the NBA Hard Court video game that is up and coming. We do not know when that is going to happen, but wanted to to see if you have a perspective, Jack, on the gaming aspect of all of this as, as someone from, from a bit of a younger generation and people, even the generation younger than you, there's a massive obsession with video games and, you know, think about Fortnite and the literally billions of dollars that are spent there. So do you have a perspective on the, the kind of gaming aspect of Top Shot in the future and how you think that may play out with people transitioning from traditional video games? to NFT type of games in the future? Uh, it's the biggest reason why I'm a believer in Top Shot because I've watched my, I actually am linked to my brother's Xbox account. I get emails every time he buys a FIFA pack. And for the past six years, I've been getting these emails. It's linked to my dad's credit card. Um, so I have to report that back to him. He probably spends 500 ish dollars a year. So when I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, these guys, these kids are spending thousands of dollars on games and every year it literally just nets out to zero dollars. And it was for their entertainment to create sets and finish challenges and play games. What if they could do that and their shit held value throughout time? And I'm like, okay, Top Shot's going to do that. So my, my grand idea, I still think is like, if you ever seen 2K is my team, um, it's this, it's the same experience. You can then just play with players. So like, you would go to Top Shot if you wanted to play with a player, and and like a 99 LeBron in my team could be the Cosmic, and a 97 overall could be the Hollow, and a 93 could be a from the top. And like, I don't need to be the one that figures it all out. But the video game aspect is, I think that's the future. A lot of people think it's just a stock market of players. A lot of people think it's a million different things. 
But my biggest upside, I think, is the video game stuff because I tweet out the numbers all the time. Like FIFA did like $1.5 billion and like they can print this money and NBA can do the exact same thing. They're taking a cut from this too. It just makes too much sense to not gamify the entire thing, which they're already doing with no utility to it. So what happens when we kick in utility? It's going to be crazy. Yeah, and I do want to throw it because I was a little skeptical at first. I was like, okay, this company is doing great stuff with Crypto Kitties, with Top Shop, but like now a video game. Like, am I expecting something in Flash? Like a little just rinky dinky? But no, they actually have they have talent from Activision, from Blizzard, from the major gaming companies. Um, and obviously, what they've had Top Shot out for oh, I don't know, six eight months. Um, <laughs> they're putting the, you know they're putting the right time into this, and so yeah. I'm excited, and I do hope that it is actually a competent enough game to you know rival others, so people not only are doing it just for the NFT top shot capability, you know, reasons, but like no, it's a really fun game. Like maybe NBA Jam kind of gamey right. feel, like right. fun aspect, like yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to have 2K, 8K graphics that you're getting on the PS5. But if you're able to play and, and owning those guys, because in, in what Top Shot's world wants it to be, like opening $9 packs whenever you want will not be plus EV. Like, I think we're fooled into thinking like, like if you can get a pack, you're making money. Like, that's not how life works or else life wouldn't work. So um, people will come into these environments and buy up they could buy LeBron's for a dollar. It might be series 900, but if they can get a LeBron, then go have utility with it. And then like another thing I want to see is I go to a Knicks game and like RJ has a dunk at the game and I want to collect that moment for five bucks to put in my virtual passport or my virtual wallet, just to say like, there's just so many things that can go with this thing that I don't know if we've touched. And People will get protective over it because they're like, if we want it to be a true market, you can't add a video game. You can't add an experience element. You can't, you know, demonetize packs. So it's very interesting. And they have a lot of power and they have a lot on their hands to make those decisions and to think super long term because every decision is obviously going to affect the next. Right. Or like you go to that game and you either get it gifted to you as part of a promotion or you right. get a raffle that you're one of the chances to actually buy one first before they go to market. Because this involves the NBA, there's just so many opportunities. And like, obviously, we know Cuban is so bullish on this and he has such influence throughout the league. Yeah. But there's so many ways that they can take this for a, you know gamification, not just in the digital world, but combining an actual physical uh, sense too. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I think that's key. And I think the the kind of user UI of it all is really important. I think that's one of the big reasons why we've seen Top Shot take off versus some of the other NFT stuff is that it's pretty much a, a normal, for lack of a better word, user experience when you're on the website versus all the blockchain stuff that's happening on the back end. Whereas mm. if you're getting into the the crypto punks or the hash masks or whatever else is out there, it's a, it's a very different experience just in terms of be, you know, you need to know how to use your crypto wallet and all these things that I don't even really know that much about. But you can come onto the Top Shot website. It looks like a normal website. You can use your credit card if you want to. So I really think that there's a lot of benefits to that. And I'll be curious to see what the the graphics of their video game look like compared to, like you said, not expecting it to be like a PS5, but hopefully it's a little bit better than like a Decentraland type of thing. Yeah just in terms of what, what people are expecting, what they're used to. I was pretty interested to hear them say they're not creating a mobile app to showcase stuff. I, like just with the technology that is out there, I figured they'd be able to, because I know with like Rainbow Wallet, you can kind of look at your collection in some form or fashion. And they pretty much said like, we're, we've built the experience on mobile well enough to where you can you know, always look at it via mobile. But I think like that's half the game is these kids are going to be at school and they're going to be like, look what I have. And, like it's going to be the new like you wear the dope sneakers to school. You wear the cool backwards hat. Like I show you my collection on my phone. I can trick. I don't know. I found it pretty interesting. I know why they wouldn't want to add any buying ability to that, because then you got to pay Apple and their fees get absolutely destroyed and they're cut. But I was pretty surprised by that. Yeah, And I think part of it, I mean. Part of it is from a prioritization standpoint, here's what their roadmap is going forward. They've already have two apps in the um, you know, roadmap for one is right. the game and two is the marketplace app. I think marketplace from an actual fungible, you know, uh, functional standpoint, as well as value to the company, 
in users makes more sense. Um, we'll see if they, you know, it could always come in the future or they just make the web version a lot, you know, easier just to say, hey, like here's right. a showcase and make it feel a bit more smooth. But uh, right. it's interesting. No doubt. TJ is on Team Cube. He wants the physical cube on his desk with the moments just. Flying. Yeah, that, that, that's been uh, that's been one of my things. Like, imagine we're in the process of building one. Okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so you know, I'll keep you updated in, because it's interesting. We're me and this and this guy. Like, he reached out to me. He said because I, I talked about on Club Top Shot, and I was like, "What if we could just you know reimagine that and it sits on my desk?" And so he's like, "I'm an engineer. Like, let's look into this." And so we're trying to build out a prototype. Uh, he's a, he's a late college kid engineer. So, um, we're kind of just bootstrapping and seeing what it comes out like, but I think that would be awesome as well. And, you know, it kind of kills anyone's, anyone's narrative that these things aren't tangible. Okay. Well, here you go. I just made it tangible, you know, yeah, in real exactly. talk, just between you and I, cause no one else is listening. You should probably get a patent for that first because <laughs> from an actual I idea know. standpoint, that's a, I mean, Hey, if you have the prototype actually in the patent, it would help from, you're already doing the design or he's probably already doing the designs and it's a long process, but yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm sure I know there's like 40 glass that, that uh, exists. And I know that, you know, that there's a million people that are building a million things and I'm sure we could potentially get a patent, but um, I'm sure like Carlini, I think is saying, look at people's shop. I don't know who that is, but I'm sure someone's done it before. And, and um, I'm just, I really just wanted it for myself. Cause I wanted to see like, would someone build me this for, you know, 500 bucks, a thousand bucks just to showcase it. Cause I think it'd be awesome. And then it kind of developed into, I wonder if we could, just work with Dapper and then sell these things, you know, through the marketplace that comes with a big purchase or something. I think it's a really interesting idea because, you know, I would love in my, my bachelor pad, I, I've got the, got my videos playing on loop. You know, the ladies yeah. love it. Like, Hey, you see that video? I paid $5,000 for that. Like that that's, a, that's a no brainer, right? That, that's, that's automatic. And then I, I really do think like, you know, the man cave ha having like little, pictures or something on the wall that's looping your videos. I think that there is something there. And again, it, it makes things a little more tangible for the people that are like, well, I could just watch these videos on YouTube or, okay, yeah, yeah. I could, I could stream a YouTube video on my wall if I want to like, okay, yeah, go for it. But that's not really cool. Like this would be actually cool. And I think that people would find some value in that. And it'd be great if there was a licensing with Top Shot that said you are only able to purchase this. It right. Really confusing if you own that moment and uh now granted could you sell that in real life to someone whatever but like right. that'd be an interesting aspect yeah, it's, it's complicated but I, I again i think it just speaks to the number of possibilities that are in this space and none of us know exactly where it's going to go but we know that the possibilities are pretty endless and we're excited to see what top shot and everything that has to do with it has in store for us we haven't even talked about the possibility of other sports. I don't think we need to dive too far into that on this show, but we, we know that UFC is coming down the pipe. We know that there's been discussions of NFL. We have the, the Dr. Seuss thing, whatever that's going to be. So this is <laughs> just the beginning, not only for sports, but for collectibles of, of all kinds. So really exciting stuff in this space. All right, we've got a couple more topics here. And at the end of the show, we're definitely going to be getting to, not sure if you saw on Twitter, Jack, but we did a little bit of a contest where we had people tweet at us their moment that they feel is the most undervalued. Yeah. Now, granted, the, the the value of those moments when that tweet went out versus now, some of them have probably doubled or tripled, but we're just kind of going to talk to them about that. Anyways, Justin, myself, producer Coop, we have each selected a moment that we will discuss. So we're going to get there shortly. But first, I, I wanted to hear a little bit about your experience with Top Shot because I think you're an interesting case where a lot of the, you know, like the Peter Jennings, the Jeremys, they, they came in, they, the Bales, they made their big purchase and they're not maybe necessarily grinding the marketplace on a regular basis. You came in, you made your big purchase with the LeBron, but then you're also doing this 1K to 100K challenge. So... I guess I'd be curious to hear, you know, for, first your thought process on the LeBron thing and also this plan to sell it to LeBron for a million dollars, but then also, you know, <laughs> why why you decided to also do this 1K challenge and is that just like a fun bit for you or yeah, what went into that 
idea. Uh, yeah, so the LeBron thing is, I actually think that it's worth a million dollars. Like, I think it's the holy grail of the platform, and that's why we bought it. Number one actually was on the platform as well, listed for the same price. And when I talked to my my group, I was just like, I know that, you know, RJ Barrett wears number nine and his jersey number, maybe not more significant than the number one serial, but like 23 LeBron, 23 Michael Jordan. Tw- I mean, tw- also happens to be my birthday. So I, I'm just very keen on the number 23. Um, so my username's is Jay Settlement, 23 boiler maker. Uh, there you go, 23, once again. So um, I just felt like it was such a special moment. It's series one. I know the Cosmic was first, but the Cosmic just did not feel special at all. And, you know, LeBron at that point, he could own whatever Cosmic moment, he could, you know, he's going to want. And I know Dapper and Top Shot want to get the players involved. And he'll probably own some moments via the platinum ices and however they distribute those or whatever they do. But when it comes to just like the way he is, the way the moment's just special. It's not, you know, his shot in against the magic. It's not his block. It's not like the greatest moment in his career, but it's just iconic. Um, so the goal, it kind of started as a joke. I just said it to Overzet. And then I kind of just kept talking about it. And I was like, maybe and then i talked to ravel and he was like well mav carter knows about it he doesn't get it but he knows that like you guys did that um so like just to just to kind of have that out in the open that we're not the craziest amount of distance away from lebron james and then lebron also acknowledged um you know a bunch of his rookie cards in a press conference this summer so I would imagine the NBA who's going to make more money on top shot than Panini cards is going to push it towards their players more. And he's a super smart guy. And I I just see it being like him understanding the value of it. So I think it would be cool uh, to sell it to LeBron James, which I've heard people talk about before, which is like if Mark Cuban, if we find out what Cuban's profile is and he buys something and then sells it, like, he could sell the exact same moment as as you and I, and it's going to go for 10 or 20% more just because he's selling it. What if LeBron James buys that moment? Does it legitimize the platform? There's just so much that comes with it. Um, and then for the $1,000 to $100,000 challenge, I had $1,000 in my account. I had kind of bought up everything I wanted to um, that I – I had planned on and I was like, Oh, this could be cool. Like everyone is seeing the the hyper returns. What does it actually look like? Like re- how hard would it be? Uh, I also recently saw that if you did 10 or if you did a hundred, no, if you did 50 trades at 10% gain, that would actually complete the challenge, which is pretty interesting. Like when you think about compound interest, Obviously, with marketplace fee, it would be 15%. Um, so that's the new goal, which led to my paper ass hands today selling the Luca Cool Cat. When I was up like 27% on it, I was like, okay, if, if the goal is to continually do 15% trades, I have to do this in case it drops. Then it went up to whatever, 2,400. And now it's like as important as locking in the profit is the three or four hundred dollars that i miss out on is like that it's a large margin like now i have to do another trade at that same percentage with this new lebron moment just to get back there um but i bought a levine moment kind of keying in on the schedule um that one sold quickly and then i bought the beal high cereal and that's right as the market dropped so you know it at that point, it's like, okay, maybe this thing isn't just churning out money and it's going to be more of a grind. So for a few weeks, I would adjust the price a little, but I didn't want to go back below and have like, I wanted progressive trades to be made. Um, and then I checked the other day and it had randomly sold. And I, I actually think it was a good buy. And then I really grind it. I didn't actually grind that hard. The Luca Cool Cat was such an obvious buy to me, like so much hype around the Cool Cat's drop. So I bought that. And then I actually would have been on the plane today. Um, so I don't know if I would have quite been able to sell the Luca at its peak, but I sold it for 2K, pretty much 2K right before. And I don't know if I announced what I bought. I made a quick, quick buy already. Actually, under what we net, um, I bought a LeBron base. 
So I'm going to make a video, just another TikTok on that and see what we can flip on. That one's up a little, but we're once again in this crazy world of it feels like everything's up 10 to 15%, which is hilarious. Um, I'm getting an update. It just went up another 10% in the last seven seconds. Jack is moving markets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't say which LeBron base. They just all bought them all. Um, they see but, your account. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what's so fun about the blockchain. They could go and look. Um, but now it's like I started to do the math. You know, How many trades away from the level we were discussing before where does it become illiquid? And that's what's unique about the challenge up to this point. I've said... And if I were in this to really make money, like, could I have turned a thousand dollars into a hundred K? I think I would be much further along if I bought multiple moments. Like I should have bought three Halliburton's or, or two Lamellos, but I'm trying to keep it to one moment, which I think is very interesting uh, part of the process because I think there's way more, you can make 10% trades now if you buy in bulk of all these buyers versus a singular moment because then you're kind of playing around with the floor, right? Like if you play on the floor, that's why the Levine sold so quickly. I bought it under, I bought the lowest floor and I just raised the floor and then it flipped, you know, within 24 hours. So uh, if you can buy multiple moments in bulk, that's kind of the way to go in my opinion. So that's an interesting take right there. I mean, because a lot of people are always asking, what should I do if I have $100, $200, $500 and I'm investing? And according to Jack here, it is, if you're trying to grow that, it's better to start at the smaller players and uh, then trying to grab that more, you know, one higher guy and you're losing out on the liquidity. Yeah, which I agree is, with that. Which is it's something risky. I'm doing, though. It's Sorry. risky to a degree, though, because the liquidity on those players, right, like uh, Lonnie Walker, is just not that high. I do know with the LeBron, if the prices do start to drop or aren't proceeding, I want to move on from him, I can sell him instantly for floor. Like LeBron will always be bought if you drop it $50 before the floor versus if you buy in bulk of Jordan Clarkson, like some guy just did, some schmuck just bought 250 someone wrote in the chat. Like if he doesn't end up being the cool cat challenge, which I would assume they have good inside knowledge on, um, like no one's buying 250 Jordan Clarkson, like at that price. So uh, there, you know, there's risk reward to everything, obviously. Yeah. And I think your, your statement about if you do the 10% 50 times, you'll end up getting there. Um, but I'll get some, so from a DFS side, that 10% makes sense, but we maybe actually should be prioritizing is those big ones where, Hey, you know, for nine trades, you might break even and that's okay, but you're betting on a potential high upside outcome. And then when that high upside outcome comes, that's going to be significantly more than your 10% and you ride that wave. Um, and I think there's a unique opportunity to do that in this type of market with, because we see how much, especially the commons kind of react to buzz, I want to say, yeah. that if you do kind of focus on and you grind those trade rumors, if you grind where you think the trend is, for example, we saw the S2 rookies, so maybe you think the next trend is going to be S1 rookies, but there's going to be those opportunities that, uh, hey, and if you're wrong, you're probably fine. You're probably going to sell it for about the same. Maybe you lose the marketplace because like, or the entire market still goes up and you get a couple percent. But yeah. if you're able to kind of focus on those, doesn't happen often, but when it does, there's the opportunity. Interesting. And, and I love, that's why I love the DFS betting community because I don't come from a land of thinking like that. And even just that statement, like I kind of realized I probably should have wait to see if I could get 15 more percent on Luca versus if it dropped, if it had just dropped down and I just made back my money, like it's probably worth that risk, right? Because it's going to be so much harder to find 50 trades at 50% versus one at 40, which I, I probably could have had here. Right. And from a stock market standpoint, if stock went up 50%, it's more likely to go up another 50% than the stock that hasn't gone up 50% at all. And right. it just from a, you know, what it's now market cap is and from a momentum standpoint, and I think when, we do see momentum. We've obviously seen a ton of momentum in the most recent from a stock market standpoint, but we're seeing it also in here. So if you can catch that rate wave, if you can find a tool or kind of a data standpoint of, hey, you see this has moved up 10% and you can understand why and you think you're still early in that game, that's probably better to kind of jump in on and hope that that 10% turns into 40 rather than, oh, this hasn't moved, but maybe you know, since it hasn't moved yet, it still will. I I love to learn, so I appreciate this insight a ton. I think it's going to help me in the challenge. Seriously, I think it's great. 
I'm just sour because my one red paperclip challenge sounds like it's already being done without the name. So uh, well, is that is that where you trade it? Is it like where you take a paperclip and you trade up to like a whatever? So this is way before you were, I think, even born. No, you were, you're just <laughs> young. Um, there's a story. I think it was a Canadian or someone took uh, 14 trades to go from one red paperclip to, I think, a house. And along the way, he also had like an entire day devoted to him in a city. Uh, he had a or like because he would get these big offers and like he had one yeah. that was an actual like um, a role in a film where he had like a speaking role and so he traded that to someone else who then got like a uh, invite to a singing show like it was, it was a pretty crazy story and so I was yeah. going to start with uh, a Joel B that TJ lost to me just to rub it in every time when we eventually turn that into a cosmic so we'll see might still do I mean I, I want to, so I got the idea from one TikTok, like there were people doing the trade stuff that you're kind of talking about. And then someone's trying to get a Tesla like from Elon Musk. Um, and then I saw like Starstock, I was in their competition, which was physical cards, but same concept marketplace. And it was kind of trying to see like who could but the marketplace wasn't as liquid and there wasn't as much momentum behind it. Um, but I could totally see a world where like we create a Google doc and like multiple people are in on this and it's totally a game. That would be a lot of fun. Completely agree. Very cool. Yeah. Justin has talked about trying to do something similar. seems like that's already what you're doing, but I think you I mean, can catch me. I mean, I'm only, yeah. <laughs> at ni- I'm only at 1900 well, bucks, right? Well, I have, I might have, a, I might have a slight edge. What I'm planning to do is within the discord, have the actual, whatever we end up with as a result. So starting with that common S2 Joel and B, which is like five, $10, yeah. whatever we end up with, we'll have some kind of contest for that discord. So this will maybe incentivize continual trading. Maybe the discord right. will help. We can at least bring it up on these shows. Um, but I just think it'd be a fun thing that as a community, everyone has a mutual interest in because at the end of the day, someone's going to benefit somehow from this or maybe some shared outcome. We'll see. For Probably sure. save it for the real in-person, uh, you know, own the moment, real life party that we meet up with in the future. <laughs> one day, one day, one day. All righty. We're, we're coming up on an hour on the show here. I think just one, one, one last topic before we get into the, the bag shield game because I, I, we, we noticed that you change your Twitter avatar to a crypto punk. We've been seeing a lot about the crypto punks over the last couple of days. We both don't know a ton about that space. So just wanted to get your, your quick elevator pitch on crypto punks, why they're appealing to you and you know wh- what you think that their role in the larger NFT space is now and going forward. Yeah. So, uh, I was doing a bunch of clubhouses. I was getting asked all the time, like, why Top Shot? How much, you know, what's your belief in Top Shot? And I was like, I believe in Top Shot. But if I could bet all my money on one thing, it would be that NFTs are the next big thing. Like, it's the next internet, it's the next whatever. Um, so then I kind of got explained what crypto punks are. And for anyone who doesn't know, they're the first NFTs, 10,000 randomized pixelated images. Uh, they were randomly like one guy has an earring, one guy will have an earring and a hat, and one guy will have an earring and a hat and a smile. And you know, the more levels they have, the more rare they are. I think the aliens or zombies are the rarest. There's only like 11 combined of those. So. You know, it's really just a supply, demand, scarcity, rarity game. And it was of the first NFT. People call it the Bitcoin of NFTs. Um, It didn't like hold like, you know, why Bitcoin so valuable is there's been so many challengers versus this. Like, it's just the first, like how many challengers, how many new projects have there really been? We'll see. But um, because of that statement, I kind of felt the need to go out and get a crypto punk and put my money where my mouth was. Um, I, I do think Jennings talks about it all the time. Like, I think it could be a, a clout thing. It could be like a FOMO thing where, uh, it's really just like, I have this and you don't. And because of that, like there'll be way wealthier redheads that are going to come in and probably buy that for me for a lot more money. That's my, that's my guess and how I get out. But I did kind of buy that one because I like, I think it resembles me. I wrote like a whole tweet thread about it, a little backstory to it as well. Um, which kind of plays into the collect what you love type of thing. I sometimes call bullshit on that. Like 
I don't collect many things for uh, five figures that I love and would be okay if they went to zero. Like I do believe it's going to hold and go up in value or else I wouldn't have bought it. But if it dips a little and I'm like, okay, I, I know why I bought this one versus one that didn't have a story or, or wasn't cool or unique to me, I would probably feel worse about it. Um, so crypto punks, I think are cool. There's only 10,000, right? There's 21 million Bitcoin. There's only 10,000 of these. Um, they're not that fancy, which could be a good thing. Could be a bad thing. We'll see. What do you guys think? I mean, just from an outside perspective and I'll give you the background. I've talked about why I get top shot so much. And then I said, I don't get crypto kitties. I don't get crypto punks, hash masks. And then just the education piece of it's the first NFT was kind of enough for me to be like, okay, now I at least understand what the value is. But then we're talking about hash masks today, right before this. And, and Andy was kind of like, they're dope. Like they look really cool and they do, they do. And there's a narrative behind them. There's a story. But like, what makes them hold value? LeBron is valuable because his player performance and LeBron James, right? Like, I get that. Now I get crypto punks. I still like, it feels like there's a lot of FOMO for a hash mask, but like, where does the intrinsic value come from? Well, you know, we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think NBA is, and I mean, you know, Top Shot has the NBA market that already exists. I right. Think that's the ability to actually, you know, go to that mainstream. Um, I think MFT still very bullish on, and I think the value of CryptoPunks is just being the first. Um, right. I think the second, third, fourth, yes, they may have value. Some may flop. I believe you're going to see the normal just NFT chart of increased value, early adopters see their value, sell off. Then it's a pivot point of an inflection point of whether this goes shooting up again and we get that rebound or if it just right. kind of fizzles. Um, I don't think CryptoPunk will fizzle because it's just going to... You know, if NFTs are successful, we'll look back on what is the history of this? What was the first? There's a lot of things in our physical history that we have similar thoughts on. I definitely am more concerned if I was to buy it with a liquidity standpoint. You kind of have to just accept that, hey, I am buying this and I am holding this probably for a while, unless right. maybe you're buying the floor. For the people who are buying the floor, um, then it's less about what you actually own. It's more of just you believe that the floor is going to go up. So as long as you can, similar thing with Top Shot, as long as you can sell at the floor, just if somebody wants to get in that LeBron moment or the Crypto Punk, it's going to be a little easier. Um, but yeah, as Peter was just saying last time, like the majority of them only have one, two, maybe three sales. Um, and right. then the other is a lot of the money that's coming into these, it's still a very niche market. Um, and the money that's predominantly coming in are people who have made a very you know, significant amount of money from cryptocurrencies. And yeah. so it's, will this ever go mainstream? And I'm not sure it has to go mainstream, but right. I think that's probably a, that's probably where I'm most kind of, uh, you know, uh, have some mixed thoughts on. Totally. I, yeah, I, I definitely don't try and think like I, this is for sure the next big thing. Um, it's always a conversation of what's the liquidity on it when it is 10,000 of them, but also there's only 10,000 of them, right? Like, is that a lot? Is that a little? Um, I also wanted to diversify within NFTs, right? Like I hold a lot of Top Shot. Um, I, it was the first time I've spent my Bitcoin as well, which is kind of to your point of it's people who've made a little money on Bitcoin. They're the ones that are buying it when you know, the, the rich real estate broker in New York, who's got so much money, what's he FOMO on, right? Is it, he's a huge Knicks fan and he's buying up NBA moments or is he like, will he know enough at how many years is it till he knows enough to even understand that this is the first NFT, right? Like that, that can never happen in theory. Um, so it's super interesting. So question for your accountant down the road. If I have an office building and I furnish it with artwork, that's a tax write-off. If I have a company called Snapback Sports and I'm getting some virtual artwork, can I write that <laughs> off? Like without a doubt, it increases your brand. So it's definitely part of your marketing strategy. My whole business is an interesting tax situation that I'm going through right now because like sports cards, right? The, sh the stuff it's done for my brand and I've made a mini Patreon business out of it. Okay, was all of it content buying those cards? Like, yeah. I don't know, I think so. I mean, the US government's gonna think so when I file. So 
it, it's very interesting, right? Like, it, is it crypto punk? Because I made it my avatar on Twitter and gained followers and I work in content. Was that a business expense? Like, I don't know. It, it is nuts. I mean, the government, they, they have no clue. And if they're if they're willing to get it, sit down in a, in a court with me and discuss crypto punks, I think at that point, it's worth paying whatever tax they want. Yeah, without a doubt, when you bought that Super Bowl ticket last week for 5,500, you were multiplying that by 70% and being like, okay, that's not actually that bad. Like, exactly, exactly. Leave it to Justin to get into the weeds about <laughs> crypto punks and its relation to optimizing your taxes. That's Justin for you guys, but hey, smart smart point. Also, wanted to shout out to Carlini here in the chat. Makes a great point. Without crypto punks, we never have crypto kitties. Without crypto kitties, we never have Top Shot. Definitely a great point. Shout out to Carlini. Know that you are one of the NFT OGs. I, I tried to get one of the NFT boxes back when those went live. I was I was not successful in doing so. They sold out very quickly, but I am keeping an eye out on your stuff and we'll definitely be looking to get involved in whatever you and Pranksy and team have coming up next. So wanted to, to shout that out. So you're saying we shouldn't have tried to create our meta basketball the same day as the uh, yeah, NFT we weren't prepared. Were coming. <laughs> we weren't prepared. I, I didn't even know that I needed the meta. Yeah, we weren't, we weren't ready. We weren't ready. And, uh, we, we did not deserve to get one, and we didn't. But there will be another opportunity. There will be plenty more NFTs to come, and looking forward to, to seeing everything that the future has in store. But the immediate future has in store a little bit of a game here, Justin. So I am going to kick it over to you so that we can wrap up the show with this. But in the meantime, everyone, please go ahead, hit that like button on this video. If you're not a subscriber already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel you'll get the notifications whenever we go live. If you're enjoying the show, appreciate that. And Justin, let's go ahead and get into the contest giveaway. All right, so we'll start off, there's, there's no giveaway. The no winners giveaway. are the ones who got on the screen. They get to show their bags. Like we can't just keep giving you, we don't make money off of this. Like I'm already <laughs> poor. Um, all right, so the contest is, the game was, we wanted to give everyone the opportunity Pump your bag, chill what you want. Let us know what you think is the most underrated, um, undervalued, the best value on the marketplace. And so first off, I just want to say, I think we got around 70 or so responses last I saw. I absolutely love just going through those because A, they were enjoyable just because it gave me a sense of what people are thinking and like what they like about certain moments. Um, I love that I learned some things about some moments, some whether it was like, you know, this was Tom Kawhi's 10,000 point or some other things, you know, just were re refreshers. Um, so highly recommend and you get a chance, just read through all those replies because they are, you know, I saw multiple people who are like, love this idea. I'm telling you, I'm going to go purchase some as well. Um, so lots of great information to go there. What we did is we each took, so myself, TJ and producer Coop, all grabbed uh, what we thought was either our most interesting, our favorite, one maybe we agreed with. Um, and what we're going to do, Jack, is we will read it. Um, the We will uh, have you kind of give your take. Do you agree? And then uh, at the end, maybe you'll choose what you think is the winner for uh, the you know, true most underrated, most undervalued in the marketplace. All right. Love it. All right, so starting off, we have from Big Bear DFS. Actually, now move to Big Bear Top Shot. Smart, smart move. All right, Brad Beal, game winner from S1. First off, it's S1. Second off, dude is potentially going to win the scoring title and is crushing it this year. I know he's had so many games with 40 plus points. It's been extremely impressive to watch. This really feels like his coming out season. What do you think? To me? Yes. Yeah, you're our guest. We're, we're getting your take. Nobody actually cares what TJ and I think. I, it's just funny you put up this. This was like the this is the Beal moment I bought because I was like, this makes no sense. He's leading the league in scoring, and he's extremely underpriced. He's going to be an all star. Should be an all star starter probably. Uh, I'm all for it. Yeah, TJ, I, I, was this I, yours or was this Coops? I'm with you. Now that this was this is one I selected because I, I completely agree. I was, I was looking up some stats for this. Like Jack just said, leading the league in points, averaging 33.1 points per game. That's three points ahead of Steph Curry, who's in second. Talked about the, the All-Star game. He's actually leading Eastern Conference guards in votes. He's got one just shy of 1.3 million votes for the All-Star game, almost 200K ahead of Kyrie Irving, who's second. And 
it's just an actual cool moment. I did in the private chat, Justin put the link. I don't know if you wanted to, to pull the actual moment up for people. If not, that's totally fine. But I, I don't know. We, we talk about the Lamello and how that's like not really <laughs> an right. interesting moment in itself. But this one is actually a cool like buzzer beater layup. So I, I'm I'm fully supportive of this one. What, what do you think, Justin? Where do you stand on Bradley Beal? All right, let's see. First, I was going to pull up because, I mean, obviously we got to bring into account price oh, as well. $168 one. Okay. Um, and, and for the like, record, I'm pretty sure that this was like probably a hundred bucks when this person submitted it. That's awesome. And we're going to have that with all of these, I think. So mm -hmm. got to obviously take that into account. Um, yeah, looks like buzzer beater, game winner there. So it doesn't definitely has a level of that kind of sex appeal for the actual moment. Uh, TJ, inform me, is this going to get the first moment badge? Yes. Okay, so that's a big plus right there. And I completely agree. I think he is an underrated player in the NBA right now. I think a little of it is just, you know, hasn't been really playing on, uh, you know, playoff contender or you know, championship contender teams. But this could really be that coming out year. So I like it. I'm bye. There it is. Justin back at it again, recommending everyone to buy every moment. That a boy, Justin. He's pumping. He's pumping. He's pumping. <laughs> I don't actually the other, know. The other day on Twitter, he did, a, he, or I think it was on Saturday, he did a little thing where he was like, re respond to us with a moment that you want to know about and, and he'll let you know if it's a buy, sell, or hold. And I think he said buy, or buy on every, every single <laughs> one. <laughs> but to be fair, if you did buy any moment on that day, you would be very happy right now. So it was it was not ill-advised advice from Justin. I was, it was either buy, I mean, at the end of the day, it just came down to buy or hold. I just don't feel that the only reason I feel you should sell is if you're going to reinvest that capital elsewhere. Agreed. And Agreed. so without me having to get into that, you know, logistics and saying, yeah, you should sell this and then go buy this one. It ended up being buy or hold. Uh, and there were a lot of great buys there. All right. Number two, we got from Chris Summers, KK Summers. We've got, oh shit. That's not even a moment. Okay. I don't know how it got in there. Reggie Bullock okay. pickpocketing LeBron. Here it is. I got is it. This, okay, this was Coop's. Okay. Yep. I was so confused. Uh, Coop, I'm going to actually pull up the dunk. I want you to kind of explain your thought process here. What would you like about it? Oh, we're pulling him in? Let's pull him in. Yeah, let's pull him in. Producer Coop, welcome to the stream. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? What's up, Jack? Um, what up? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think this one one it was one of the first moments that I bought. You know, as not as a, as a pretty casual NBA fan, I've always been super interested in the Knicks. I, I know you're you, based on just following your Twitter, you're, you're a Knicks guy. Um, I thought this play was awesome. One LeBron is in it. He pickpocks LeBron, takes it right to the rim. Um, and I thought for my budget, a twenty one dollar S one uh, common was, was a super good buy. So uh, the haircut also gave me a little bit of an extra bump. So I, I love it. <laughs> Can you pull up the moment on yeah, the stream? Yeah, I, wanna, yeah. I mean, I should. Oh, all right. Nice pickpocket. <laughs> it is a nice so, one. yeah. So my favorite moment, uh, I don't know if it'll come up, is the Donovan Mitchell for a very similar reason. He swat, you know, the major block on LeBron, and then they actually continue the moment, and he has a huge dunk. So this is an interesting one. You've got the Knicks. You've obviously got LeBron in the moment. And I think for a low budget, right, like that's a pretty intriguing thing. My, I mean, my personal opinion, what I get nervous about is holding on to a player like Reggie Bullock, right? So do I think in the next three weeks, you know, we're going to have a thousand more Knicks fans and they're going to pay 30 bucks for this if Bullock has, you know, hits four threes in a game, which he's done recently. I think it could go up 50%. Absolutely. Because you're at a $20 price point and like your margins are very slim right here, right? Like if 19 goes to 25, that's a massive gain. Um, I, it wouldn't be like a long-term hold. I know a lot of people who do see there's potential in holding just any S1 because people are going to try and complete an entire S1 set. Um, S1s are just first, so they're going to be valuable. I think the market's always going to be a mix, not fully like Pokemon. Like a lot of people who buy the Series 1 just because they're Series 1 are like Pokemon early this stuff is, you know, the most valuable stuff. Whereas I think like Luca, Ja, Zion, LeBron, Series 2, Series 4, Series 6 are always or probably will be more valuable than Reggie Bullock will ever be. 
Um, so I think it depends on what, what was the prompt in the contest, I guess. What's what you feel is just yeah, just most undervalued, most underrated, what you feel is kind of the best buy out there right now. Yeah. So, Coop, what's the undervalued? You just think it's it's price below and you see a, a quick bump coming. Yeah, I, I think there's a potential for a quick bump. I also think with influx of users, I think people are going to want to get you know some S1 in their portfolio. And if you've got yeah. a pretty small budget, like if you look at the S1s, there's just not a ton to buy that are you know right. under under fifty bucks or under, even under a hundred bucks. Um, so and I then guess, I think yeah. Nix too is a big market. So who knows? Absolutely, and so is obviously anything LeBron Lakers. So my question would be to get a better understanding: Was there anything else at that range that you maybe priced out, and you said, like this, you know, this crappy play is selling for twenty bucks in Series Two? I'd rather hold this. The insights of some of the guys that are the sharpest in the game. I, I did not do that, but certainly <laughs> something to to take a look at for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm check. I'm checking this one out now too. I would. I would say another. Also, I don't know if people. I. I just. I tried to buy some, but I don't know if everyone's going to buy these now, Coop, or what. But I just tried to buy like three different ones, and it didn't work. So. I, What's I'm up, getting, chat? I'm trying I'm, to get. I'm getting cool. I'm getting cool padded here. I'm gonna end up buying. I'm gonna end up buying like a forty dollar Reggie Bullock just because for, I feel like I have to. <laughs> for full but. transparency, too. Like I said, this is one of the first moments I had. I pulled it when Justin asked me to pull it, and I was like, "Hmm, should I buy like two or three more of these?" And I did not. <laughs> so, <laughs> and full I, one thing that I'll say that that I've looked at and that I do like about this one is that I, I like for for again what Koopa's saying for people with a lower bankroll getting the only common s1 moment of a player i think there's some some value to that so we look at reggie bullock he's only got three moments he's got this one he's got a metallic or yeah metallic gold series one and then he's got a cosmic so and i don't know they're all the same it's, play i believe yeah if somebody's a reggie bullock fan they, they really only have you know one option if, if they're looking for a cheap one so I, I just think in general there's value to having yeah it's, it's all the same the same play so I think there's some value in having the the cheapest, most affordable Series One moment of any of the given players. So I, I will will give you that too. I'm actually going to look to see if I already have one of these. I'm not sure if I do. I, I early on I went on a random S1 buying spree, so there's a chance I have one sitting around in my in my Top Shot account. But I agree. Hey, if you're trying to get an S1 LeBron, this is the cheapest way to get an S1 with LeBron in it. <laughs> and I think that's obviously a perk. Um, but and, also, and, like the Knicks are going to the finals, so like after <laughs> last night, but, like look at Caruso's numbers and fucking Kuzma. You might as well grab Reggie Bullock for our run. Yeah, last last night was pretty crazy too. They really put a hamper in on. Um, and yeah, and Jack, I think this touches on the same thing we we're talking about crypto punks. Where are you buying at the base? Because I think this moment will just forever probably rely you know rely on what's the base of the s ones and if that right. all moves up then this will also move up so i would say you call this like a middle term, you know medium term hold with a long term for if you just want kind of to buy into the base of the s ones right makes sense all righty we got one more justin all right yours what do you got for us I, do, I, I have no idea what you picked i don't think uh, I mean, yeah. Jack's gonna love this one. I didn't even consider it when I said it, but um, let's see. All right, Zach we Levine. have Zach Levine, Series One, three pointer hits his. So first of all, it's from at Benny Drool, and so this is his thirteenth three pointer of the game, game winning shot. Absolutely one of my favorites. Added a double because the person below responded and gave a little more context too. Uh, Lunder, so at Badger Viking guys, that was definitely my pick too. He's only 25, sixth in scoring this year, and that game winner was not only his highest number of threes, it was his highest scoring game to date with 49 points. Um, I will also throw in there that he, I think, as of a couple of days ago, just got to the point where um, he's the highest scoring player in Bulls history outside of Michael Jordan. Um, yeah, I looked at the ratio of his common there, the Series 1 common to the MGLE, and it was actually a 19 to 1 ratio, which is significantly higher than the majority. So you have to assume that either the MGLE is significantly overpriced or this is underpriced, and I'm leaning towards this being a bit underpriced. Um, and then, let's see, I had one other note as well. Um, 
Yeah, no, I think that really covers it. Uh, and that 49 point game was huge. And so I think he's an extremely underrated player that after the injury has come on strong, um, going to be all star this year and just as a you know, young long term prospect. So I think this has in, in a strong market with the Bulls. So I think this has short term potential just from as people you know become a little more familiar with his name as he's just putting up so many points. Um, and then long term from a just, um, you know, I think that's it's a value moment. That's S1. Can you hear me? My AirPods died. I can hear you. And uh, we have. let's go with the breaking news because real quick, chat yes. is absolutely loving this. Show me a pickle because pickle got banned. And uh, for those who don't know and are really confused what's going on, pickle was a, an account on bot that was a marketplace bot that was able to just get all the cheap values, um, all the steals. And it was interesting because in the past week, the – Dapper Labs uh, Top Shot team has gone from we are uh, mixed thoughts on marketplace bots because we think they have some value to especially after yesterday with just the influx and what we saw on the site and um, you know Rohami even saying like hey this is a problem we need to look into it they did look into it and it sounds like he is now banned and there are a couple other bots out there um, so we'll see what happens with them um, we gave a shout out to one it was React which has definitely is definitely another bot out there that we um, Told the staff about. Yeah, okay. RIP Pickle. And, and I, I did see earlier in the chat when you know I did my little Herzig robot bit that they were saying they want they want to see Herzig versus Pickle, the, the <laughs> battle of the robots. I thought that was funny. Anyways, back oh. to Zach Levine. What do you think, Jack? I mean, I just don't know how closely everyone's been following my challenge. This is the first moment, but, and then the Beal was the second. I mean, it's just, it's funny because I think a lot of us are thinking the, the same way about it. A lot is, all three moments were definitely moment centric, which I think is really cool and shows that maybe there's, hasn't been quite like I think we're it's not fully baked in that the new people coming in are going to look more at the moments than know the history to this stuff because like you said right people explain stuff that maybe you who's been on the platform for a while now didn't even know and I still learn stuff every day like misprints or you know a, a bunch of different the 10,000th career points stuff like that so incredible moment similar to Beal like he's he's probably going to get into the all-star game I would think and what happens if if AD's out for a while and they're nervous about him and they don't want to waste LeBron's years and they swap Schroeder and Harrell and Kuzma and any pick they have for him? Like that's what makes you know, like this if he start if he's on the Lakers, this thing doubles on trade night, right? So a player like him who's been super rumored and the NBA is just so crazy like that that you never know. The upside is kind of dates back to what we were talking about before, right? Like I don't know if this is a fifteen percenter, but it could be a it could be a hundred percenter, which is crazy. All right. That is it. Those are our three. Um, so congrats to the people who put up some really good ideas. And I told you, like we only updated three from a time wise, but there were so many additional ones they in the great. morning, you know, in the comments. They were awesome. What do you think, Jack? Do we have a winner? Do you have a which one at the marketplace we're open right now? Um, would you recommend uh, How people? Is this one for? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, that really plays into my. This one's going for 137 right now. Low, low ask. Levine's going for 137, and Beal is going for 168, and then the bulk is going for 21. I would say, and it, it's probably funny based off my initial feedback. I would go the Bullock moment just because. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Did not see that one coming. Right? All right. Well, he's oh, already bought the other two. He needs a new one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Only because what we were talking about, which is the, the bulk play, right? Like you're not going to be – a lot of people aren't going to be able to bulk buy these Zach Levines or these, um, you know, Beal moments. And what's more likely, like Beal goes to 350 or Bullock goes to 35 bucks and you're up 80% on it and you just bought five of them for 100 and now you're at 350. So I think like that's what kind of makes this undervalued. <laughs> Jack buys 80. <laughs> Jack I, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like I sound like such a, a – an ass when I say this, but like, I don't even know if I, I don't, I haven't checked like the low. I just have a ton of moments because I opened a ton of packs when I was early to it. So 
Let me let me make sure I don't have any Bullock um, in in my portfolio. Uh, I don't think I have any Levine or the Beal after I sold it. But let's see if I have any Reggie Bullock. I don't believe I do. Is Jack, is Jack able to screen share? Uh, you yeah, know what? I don't think he is. Uh, if he uh, has a guest, he can try. Yeah, I can share my screen. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I think so. I was on Intangible, but. Um, there you go. Uh, I think oh, he I just can't click this screen. There we yeah. go. That's what he can't. Um, yeah. So you can see I command F Reggie Bullock. There's nothing there. Um, <laughs> but I do have some fun stuff down here that, like, I don't even know I have. Like, for me, you know, what's funny about these S1s is, like, why is Tory Craig worth 30? Well, I have two of them, but, like, you know, Eric Gordon. Like, what is Eric Gordon when he retires? So that's kind of why I was I was less excited about the Bullock moment in the long term, but in the short term, which is kind of backwards because you want to hold S one just to hold S one. Uh, I could see like the the rising tide of S one being beneficial. And you mentioned like I mean the way that you know people who were in this from the beginning, a lot of their just moments they have because they just rip those packs, hold on to them, and just go from there. Exactly. Um, what kind of packs are you still holding on there, Jack? Uh, got any, yeah. uh, got anything uh, fun? I'll show that. That's actually uh, everyone's favorite thing that I have here. Let me see if I can uh, share that tab. Let's see. Imagine being able to just drop two hundred eighty nine dollars and get a legendary pack. Right. Like what a time. Well, I didn't. I didn't open any. I'm trying to think if I. I'll show you the most valuable pack I think I ever bought, but. Um, I still have to open the cool cat I got last night. Haven't done the gift. Have some, you know, some shitty series two. This is the big one. Yeah. So I do have a question. What is the strategy for holding on to these? Because from an expected value standpoint, it's purely random. If better players get pulled early on, then the value maybe goes down versus if you were to open it. If maybe there's that number one, like if you're going to try to shill it and like or do a break later on, maybe. But yeah, what's so the thought? So Raz potential. Um, What's Raz? Raz is let's say we value that account or that pack at 10k, and then 10 people buy him for a thousand, and each player or each person gets a random number. And so a break. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 A break, but well, you can do a break where I think the breaks are less interesting to me because the break, like I'm going to charge you a premium for the Lakers, right? Because you're going to get AD LeBron and that kind of. Then I have to find someone who's going to pay 4K and what's, you know, right. and then they can be left with nothing versus I think with the Raz, if maybe you can guarantee everyone gets something, which I think is better. Um, and then I assume you guys have heard that they're going to, you can trade packs and you're going to be able to sell packs. So it's like, you know, holding wax. And um, you've just seen what the Fleer stuff goes for or any 2003 stuff that could have LeBron in it. So I think that's a cool thing, which is like, and as everyone starts to break stuff or open stuff up, yeah, the EV could go down. But like, even if it gets down to there's four packs left and one is a number one of Luca, like that pack could be worth, you know, 100K. Right, which would right. just be crazy. Um, so if I if I'm trying to play it, it's also like I've played, I've made a lot of risky investments on the platform, and that could be a very easy way to just not gamble and end up with a Duncan Robinson <laughs> three pointer, um, and just you know take 10k off the table because people think they're going to pull the LeBron. So um, it's interesting. And uh, the cool cat and the gift. Is there a strategy for holding that or no? That that's just for content. Um, we're supposed to rip that stuff. I would rip the uh, cool cats with you guys if you want. If we, as we're I close, I don't know if chat wants to. Chat, do you want that? <laughs> I don't. Let's see. Chat, do you um, want? It? Yeah. Do we want the cool cat? We for wait, sure do. Wait for that delay. Yeah, yeah start true. coming in. <laughs> In, in the digital age, I can't believe there's still a delay. Well, that's producer Coop has to make sure in case we say something that's not too kosher. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is. Okay. All right. We got a yes. Let's go. All right. Let me, uh, let me share the screen again. Do we want the audio? We want the full experience. What do we want? Oh, oh yeah. we need, we, we want the audio. Click that, click that square. Click that square. All right. Here we go. Um, the cool I cats. Let's have the best music too. 
I know. Sure. I, did drink, I did drink a little the other night, and we did dive into a season tip-off, which was a really crazy experience. Um, not that crazy because the upside in those packs aren't that cool, but um, I'm waiting once again, storytelling. I want to rip uh, the deck, the hoops with Cuban on club top shot. That's like the goal with that one, which I think knowing I those guys, we can, we can probably make I that. hear that someone in the club has a small connection. to Yeah. Like that. We'll, we'll see. All right. Oh, the marketplace is down. Oh, we forgot about that. <laughs> I don't know why we can't open packs. Even the marketplace is down. Like, oh wow, what a tease! Great. That is hard. All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come back on at some point because we just blew all the shit out of. <laughs> out of that. Oh, oh wow! I uh, yeah, I, I forgot that that was the case right now. Well, sorry, chat. We tried. We wanted to. We will have to have Jack back at another point so that, that he can rip open one of his packs for us. But I think I think we've covered it all. Any any final words for the people, Jack, before we sign off here? Um, I would say if you guys have questions, like hit me on Twitter. That's been the most fun is like meeting you guys tonight. I know Justin, we've been DMing for a while, but uh, just being ingrained in the community, the Discord stuff. I would love to hop in your guys' Discord. Like Discord's become just the funniest place. Um, I always say like once something starts getting memed, that's when you know you've got something good. Like NBA Twitter's the the goat of memes, but like Top Shot. You know, Overzet made his video. I've seen some memes starting to pop up. Like that's that's when you know we're having fun. Yeah, that Overzet video was just fantastic. That was and great. Uh, obviously, everyone's already stroked his ego enough. But no, that was that was fantastic. He deserves all the Fred Van Vliet's for that. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely, Justin. Any final words, my friend? No, nah, this was great. We're, this was great. We're gonna bring uh, hashtag Bring Jack back. So uh, just pump that on Twitter when you get bored and we want him back on. We'll uh, we'll make sure we use that. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jack, for spending this time with us. Thought you had a lot of, a lot of awesome stories to tell a lot of interesting stuff that you've been up to both in the top shot space and outside of it. So we would definitely love to have you back sometime so that we can finish what we started here yeah. and open one of these packs. So thanks everyone for spending another night with us here. Thanks to everyone that's going to be listening out there on the podcast feed Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, leave a review if you enjoyed the show. All righty, I think that is it. We will have some, some more shows coming up. We have another special guest lined up for next week's show, so looking forward to that. We'll be teasing that out on Twitter at some point, and I think that will do it. So there's Arnie. We always like to end the show with Arnie on the screen. He is the Own the Moment mascot. Look at that face. I mean, come on. That that says it all right it's there. Cute. I mean, it would be cuter if <laughs> it was a digital puppy, but it, 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 it was cute. I would hey, much some, rather have digital shit around the house. Some, than the real one. <laughs> someday, someday. We've got the crypto kitty, so the crypto pu puppies are probably right around the corner. Okay, longest sign-off ever. So, for Justin Herzig, for Producer Coop behind the scenes, and for our very special guest, Mr. Jack Settlement, I am TJ Lasig. We'll catch you guys next time.